Whoa, what's up? It's a uh, <clears throat> welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, I wanted to start like 10 minutes ago and I had a brain fart and tweeted about it. <laughs> I was like, need to start right now, but realize that um, you can't start, you can set up StreamYard to start at a certain time and probably any software to stream, but I don't think you can jump the gun, especially well, with StreamYard, I think you definitely don't have that option. Like, I almost want that option to, you know, start a little early if I want. But I think you can only start late, um, which would make sense. But that may be because of YouTube's, like, I guess, broadcasting protocol or something. Anyway, that's, that's, uh, it's in the past now. So I'm, I'm moving on to uh, what we're going to talk about today. I'm wondering if I should talk about the books or the website or other things first before I get into this tutorial stuff because the tutorial is um, I don't know it's the bulk of kind of what we're doing because it's what I'm going to be finishing up today hopefully um, tutorials are uh, a pain uh, not it's like it's like an endeavor that is way different than making art so that's why I call it a pain it's like making art making a cover making a book is kind of like all just fun for the most part, you're just like creating and uh, uh, tutorials is making something very specific. It's you got to have like a to make it good. You have to make uh, a tutorial with steps and with planning. And so, uh, yeah, that's that's what's up. Um, I feel like the the cool part about tutorials are the different ways you can kind of teach like you can you can go straight step by step like follow along and uh other ways to like kind of use analogies or or kind of examples to show your points but um especially in a written tutorial because a video one is totally different if you're if you're making a video a vlog style tutorial it doesn't matter everything's live or everything's like happening um in a time lapse form you know so you're seeing it immediately it's not like a it's not the same thing. So making a written tutorial is like, in a, in a way, almost like writing, um, I don't know, like some sort of article. <laughs> That's what it feels like to me. It feels like I'm writing like a, an editorial piece for the newspaper, except I'm doing the art as well. So let me break down the way I do tutorials. Um, I've done tutorials for my YouTube and for, I think on a couple different blogs, but right now I'm doing tutorials for how to draw comics.net. Uh, and it's cool because it's all centered around comic books. So I like that angle. Like if you do art tutorials, they don't have to be for comic art. It can just be for whatever. And, uh, you end up having like, uh, I don't know, some sort of vague focus rather than if it's for comics, I always have this point to come back to storytelling or this whole point to come back to style you know there's it's just it's just a different approach uh because you're you're wanting to see it uh with a different angle you know if you're just doing a general art tutorial you just for for art it could be for anything you know a fine artist has got a totally totally different goal than someone else let me bring up this website on this other browser and then we can actually see what we're talking about here. Let me just go to how to draw because it's it's a it's a cool site. Um he's got tons of stuff. Uh Clayton Barton. The Barton's uh Clayton Barton's pretty much um exclusively comic book stuff website and most of it's uh how to uh, learning and work and mentoring blogs, that sort of thing. Uh, but I'm going to bring up this web page and we can talk about a couple other things. And then we'll get into a little segue, uh, into actually doing it, but I figured I'd share here. Hmm. Dude, literally no one in the chat. Hmm. Hmm. That's weird. Uh, I haven't had no one in the chat since, uh, I don't know. Three years ago, four years ago, something like that. Uh, maybe they're sleeping. Who knows? What? What is the? Is there a holiday? 
Um, so <laughs> let's bring this up. This is the website. This is how to draw comics.net. It's a, uh, like I said, all about teaching comics. Um, and a lot of these tutorials on the free side here, you can go to, let's see, uh, free learning. There we go. Under tutorials. These are my written tutorials. I always show the back one cause it's like the, my most recent one. Um, actually there is one more, way more recent than this, but it's just not uploaded yet. Um, but I'm working on the next one. It's very cool to see. Uh, Peter Retro Pelamati Pelamati. Uh, how do you do you uh, for the double T? You have to like pronounce it with more emphasis, right? Uh, this is what my dad tells me. Um, it's for Italian. So uh, Pelamati, like two t two two seconds or two beats worth for for the T. Pelamati or Pelamati. I don't know. I think I'm saying it the same way. In my brain, it works. Uh, what's up, dude? <laughs> thanks for thanks for filling out the chat. At least me, uh, at least uh, give me uh, somebody to bounce off of. It helps. People don't realize when you have a bigger following, it almost. Here we go. He's got the. Uh, he's got what I'm looking for. Um, I was saying when you when you have a bigger audience, you it's just easier to actually do. I feel like once you're the once you're a big streamer, it almost makes itself. Like the chat, what they call chat farming, they'll, they'll freaking, <laughs> the, all they have to do is just read what people write and, uh, it, it forms its own thing. Anyway, palm, miam, miati, uh, do you pronounce that L pal? Why is there a two M's? That's, I feel like to me, that's, that's a weird way to pronounce it. Hmm. Anyway, uh, I'll get back to that once I have a little more coffee. I think I'll be able to do it better. Anyway, this is my tutorial. That's, I think, one of the better ones that I've done. Uh, we've checked it out before. I like it, and I'm going to follow this for all the anatomy stuff going forward. So a lot of people just like to do, oh, here's how you draw literally. I'll show you the lines. You can copy the lines and make it work. For me, I think the whole point of teaching is to like let you get curious. So it's like, I'm just trying to make you curious enough to check it out further. Um, and, uh, I think the curiosity comes from showing you how cool it can be. So the only thing that's different here is that, uh, you know, from other tutorials would be, I'm trying to make you realize, Oh, I'm, I think this is cool. Here's why it's cool because uh, I'm going to visually show you in a way that maybe other people haven't. Um, this I'm kind of, half stealing from two different people. Uh, I think both work at Center Art College, maybe. Uh, but this is Michael Hampton's style of box uh, drawing and also uh, Wes, no, not Wes, uh, Will Weston, I think does this box style kind of, uh, anyway, this is, that's neither here nor there. Uh, it maybe proves that I'm pulling from many different people, not copying just pulling inspiration from many different sources. And this is what is cool about the tutorial. Um, I'll come back to the symbols thing is this part here, the, the breakdowns where I use one skeleton and then I show the piece separated and isolated and kind of moving in, in whatever way I needed to. Um, and this is also kind of stealing from Michael Hampton, but in a different way like this, he does this, but not in this way. Um, and I think it's, this makes it kind of unique. Um, any visual representation like this is good to show you differences and, and whatnot. And then finally we do like a step-by-step -step that you can copy or just use it for inspiration to do your own thing. But yeah, that's how it goes. Uh, Hey, Hey, don't call me stupid right off the bat now. Uh, Amaris, what's up? Good to have you. Bionic bras here. My, my other bro, top of the morning to you, laddie. Uh, yes. It's funny that you bring up <laughs> your, your Irish accent because we were just talking about how I could not pronounce uh, Peter's last name because I'm even though I'm Italian I'm trying to say it correctly uh, Palimiotti maybe is that how it goes I don't, I don't know. I'll try it later uh, maybe it'll just be a, a running joke today that I can't speak um, where are we up to okay I was just using this for a reference because I'm going to show you the new tutorial but this is the idea I break my teaching style if you will for tutorials are one, I give you like pretty much upfront tell you the challenges that are going to be coming up for whatever we're going to talk about. In this case, it was back anatomy. Uh, but after that, um, 
after that, I start with two different things. I like to do the challenges up front and then really break down like it in the simplest forms. And I try to do that here with boxes, but um, here's a part that I really like doing. People don't use this a lot. I think this is a really, this is like the equivalent of you using like uh, anagrams or what, what are those other like, uh, those devices that you uh, kind of, um, what am I thinking of? I'm trying to like, maybe like abbreviating different words and then making it into like some catchy word. This is the visual form of that. This is symbols are like a way to trick your brain into remembering something easier. So this is something I like. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, so the arrowhead here for the, the, the traps, that's what it just looks like to me. And for me, this is how the two main masses of the back wedge together. And so to me, it's like a way for you to remember. It's a way that I remember. And uh, if you're anything like me, you forget real easily. Like, even if you really get in depth anatomy and do like pages and pages of back anatomy, five months from now, you might forget. Easy. You know, uh, and it's not, it's not you. It's just your brain and uh, the internet and life just getting in the way. Uh, Aramaris is saying, uh, Hey, stupid, I have an announcement. I'm no longer doing art, but I'm doing costume designs. Uh, wing set, wing? Costume designs wing? Apparently, that's where my skills lie. Um, lay lie. Uh, well, costuming is probably using a lot of the same brain. Oh, sewing. Sewing. There you go. Dude, sewing is a skill. Um, and costume design is still you know, using a lot of the art kind of creativity stuff going on. So that's how you do it. Um, I feel like you, you're you using the same stuff is my point. So I, I'm, I'm glad you're finding your road, your, your, your route. Um, it's hard. It's really hard. I started doing game design first. And even before that, I was doing music. And, you know, everybody, like, tries their own route. And before that, I wanted to be a dentist. We talked about that before. Uh somewhere i forgot which stream i was talking about that all blends together but you don't really know what you're doing until you kind of like do it and make it make adjustments uh peter says uh fake it till you make it or so he's hurt uh i've heard such a thing and it kind of is true it, it's uh i think i'm a fan of that saying because it's it's mostly true we'll say that i think it's true enough to say uh there's like a little bit of it where faking it implies that you're not believing in that you could do it or you know what I mean like or maybe it's implying that you're at least giving yourself a fake confidence to until you get there and have the real skills so that's why I kind of like it anyway enough of that let's move on to what I thought of a couple of books I don't know if you guys seen the book uh confederate monster did I leave it over here mm, did I put it back on the shelf I put it somewhere confederate monster um let me pull it up let me see if I can search it real quick. It might be, uh, who knows? We'll see if we find it. Monster. IgG Indiegogo. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so I only got the first issue because I was like, who knows? I don't know. I don't know this guy, Dave. You know, Dave Schwartz. Uh, so I don't know how it's gonna, how good it's gonna be, but. Now I am mad I didn't get the other two, so I'll have to go back and get the other two issues. But I got the first issue, and I have thoughts on that. Um, I also have thoughts on Groken. And then we'll do some more tutorial stuff. Stoof. Um, anyway, Confederate Monster, the basis of the bo this book is like, there's a mix of uh, this kind of old school monster horror, like Frankenstein and and that feel mixed with Civil War confederate uh kind of style uh warfare in america so there's this mix of that uh, a, a bridging of those two things and it, it comes together pretty well i think there's like a it's structurally i'm i'm a huge fan of good structure and dave knows what he's doing um i think all the beats hit some of the moment to moment storytelling is the bomb and i think this guy writes and draws it so bravo my dude, for issue one. Let's see. My goal with this campaign is to print the first three issues along with the other exclusive pairs. Blah, blah, blah. 
Hmm. Hmm. I think he did draw it, guys. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm going to just say that. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. He drew it. He did it all. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I think there was a mix of good uh, stakes. There, like The stakes were just immediately thrown at you. Um, and then even the, the kind of the hook to it at the end was grotesque and like almost a little too much, but a, still hooks you. So um, again, bravo to that. I think the art works. There was enough given uh, there. Uh, you kind of felt for the main character and uh, and his wife in this world of of kind of the South in America, because uh, they're they're kind of they're, they're mentioning a few different things like you know they're they're kind of on the side of not going along with uh, slavery and whatnot. A lot of what Civil War was about. Anyway, uh, there was this kind of secret plot uh, for the South to kind of over to overtake the North. And um, we'll just leave it at that. It's a really cool, it's a really cool premise. Uh, I I give it probably like a nine. It's a it's a nine out of ten for me for an issue number one. I really like it. I would recommend it to just about anybody. So good job, Dave. Uh, hope you hope you continue making them. And I will probably get uh, purchase the others because it looks like issues one through three he's gone through, which is cool that he's doing it in an issue instead of a trade back. Okay, so now um, Groken, um, well, Groken 2 is there. Let's see if Groken Indiegogo is still like available to look at as like a visual aid. Um, and yes, I'm still using DuckDuckGo. I heard this dude, the, the, the guy who made DuckDuckGo is kind of, I don't know, dropped the ball with going a little bit, bending to the, to the mob of Twitter and... Uh, he just made a few tweets that like kind of went anti free speech, even though he's got duck, duck, go. That's all about, <laughs> that's all about like free freedom of like, you know, and privacy. Yeah. He kind of just went the opposite direction. And so you're, it makes you question the whole platform really. So, but anyway, I'm still using duck, 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 go. Uh, and real quick, my, my thoughts on Groken while we're here. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Uh, if Zaid was here, um, I'd be, talking to him directly because we're both big fans of Kenneth. I think anybody who ever sees Kenneth's work is a fan of Kenneth. I don't think you, I, I don't, my point is like, I don't think there's a taste for Kenneth. I think he's just, he's, he's just a universal. I feel like, um, if you just see his work, you don't really question that it's good. It's more like, it's more like, Oh, do I have time right now <laughs> to read it? You know, it's just a matter of time. Um, it's an inevitability that you read it. Um, so this is the cover I got, um, which is a really cool cover and everything makes sense after you read it. Um, like what's going on, even in the cover it makes more sense at least. Um, all the covers look great though. I should have got them all realistically. A lot of cool stuff going on. So it immediately what I love about it. And I feel like what everybody will love about it is the lore. The lore of Groken is, uh, and the, just the global world building here is uh, very much present and you can't get around it. You like really enjoy um, just being there because you're like, what is this stuff? There's, there's so many things that are like designed, but I don't even know if like there's so much implied design that you're intrigued with like, like how does this even work? You know, how does this uh, contrast with, you know, other locales or how does this weapon work against this other weapon? How do these people kind of live together? Um, the story is written pretty well. I think uh, structurally it works really well. Um, I think that um, the gripes I have, like there's, I know he's, English is the second language. So I wonder what this reads like in Spanish is my first, is my first question. Cause I think the, it's part, it's cool because of this intrigue. Um, if you look at, if you look at other people's kind of work from maybe another language, they kind of like the translation sometimes is a little bit odd though. In some ways, like what's cool about other cultures is that it appears magical or like, uh, it's got this romantic nature to it. Um, cause you don't, it doesn't feel the same. Like even though it's written in English, Groken feels like it's, it's written in, 
some sort of different cadence like the cadence of how it's written feels like it's different in in a way like like it was based from a translation somewhere else so there does seem like to be something there and that's so that's part of a gripe but mostly mostly just a comment uh, it didn't really bother it just had like a different cadence than if you read like a really american you know i guess writer uh but pretty impressed with how it was written pretty impressed with just how like the structure was um it, it jumped around a little bit uh but it it has a lot of like intention i feel like it's got so much intention that everything works you know even though like it, it jumping around didn't make it worse is my point you're very curious about what groken who groken really is and there's a million other characters in this book that he really puts attention to uh peter says uh, kenneth is does great work uh we all steal from yes of course we all steal from kenneth um i i it just comes because i i used to do studies from his stuff and and obviously you have to stop otherwise you start becoming a clone <laughs> but uh so I, I stopped but uh even even now even today like i'll do something i'll be like oh that's really some rockefeller lines that just come bubbling up from this from the studies uh which is not a bad thing the dude has economy of line like no one else um every page looks like a super poster like uh and he, like this is one of my favorite pages and i'm i'm glad he's got it posted here but this is like some storytelling that's off the charts um just the way it's presented compositionally anyway enough of kenneth roqueford the legend the man the legend um let's move on we're going to go to this tutorial i'm going to share my other screen and we're going to look at the the present tutorial that we're going to work on um you're doing an arm tutorial this is one that like arms are like deceivingly the most difficult in some ways like i feel like the back is the opposite the back is like deceivingly the easiest in some ways because it's 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 it, it's rounded a little bit but it's kind of flat you can see everything almost from one angle in in, in a lot of ways um and just like the hand is deceivingly simple like oh that's a, just a shape it's got these little cylinder thing coming out of this mass that what's crazy about it is because the hand can contort and that's the crazy part and just like that the arm can contort in a, a good amount of ways and it's a cylinder so all these things are wrap around this thing and uh uh what makes it i think deceivingly hard is that you always see arms and you see your own arms a lot like living your life you know you're so your eyes are so close to looking in front of you and your arms are always there uh, you're so used to it you you have this inherent feeling like this is going to be easy you know just have this like oh, i can draw an arm i've seen it you know I, I see it right here um whereas the back is the opposite like you never see it so you think it's gonna be hard um I, i've never thought about that that's the first time I, i've ever said that um so interesting observation let's bring up my iPad. I actually have the old cover layout here. I was looking at it because I'm doing the cover, penciling it right now, and I'm, I, I look back on the, the full digital version a lot of times just to see what's going on. Um, so let's go to arm tutorial here. Um, and we're, we're, we're midway. Uh, I don't say it. We're probably about a third of the way through. I've gone through. I usually do all the art for it, and then I go do the writing for it because uh, it usually by doing the art one it gets me reacclimated to i guess um, doing arms and getting used to the anatomy because i even if you're drawing arms and doing professional comic art so to say so to speak um you really don't kind of recognize your the holes in your knowledge until you start doing it so that's why i do the drawing first i'm like okay i yeah i'm obviously not really aware of uh, a couple of these sections of the anatomy and so i need to like by doing the art the art for it i get accustomed to my whole my my holes of <laughs> knowledge uh plot holes um what's how do people normally say that i feel like that's just a weird way to say it anyway this is the arm tutorial let's go through what i've done so far it's not a ton of work uh that's i've done so far but uh i feel I think um, the old tutorial that I did a month or so, or so 
uh, let me say that again. I did this tutorial a month ago and it's not up on the website yet. So this one is kind of on the back burner, um, like, you know, in queue. So I got some time. That's what I'm trying to say. So I start out with like structure, like the basic of basics. Here's the arm in skeletal form. Here's the proportion, you know, and how it kind of relates in some ways. Even the art is not great. It's just, um, what's great is your, is intention. So that's the, what I was talking about before. Like here, the whole point is the teaching point is, Oh, look, it's the same length as like your rib cage ish, you know? Uh, and also that your, your upper arm and lower arm to your wrist is about the same length. So each one of these things has its own purpose. Um, here I kind of just show like the, the bone is deep within the muscle, the muscle kind of like really, you know, you, you don't visualize it until you draw it and see it, but the, the bone is like, you know, obviously only peaks out in certain, certain points. And otherwise it's like really within, uh, wrapped around a lot of muscles. So that's what that was for. Um, here we kind of go through a gesture kind of, um, talk. I'll, I'll explain how gesture works. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm wanting to show my process of teaching, uh, which is, trying to take this complexity that which I warn you about in the beginning and then I kind of get into this area of learning it in a simplified way like here gesture volume and then if you shade a, a simple volume it's not so hard as like seeing all the muscles compounded so this the point here is to show uh, the simplicity and like the approach uh, and then we move on to kind of like taking what those forms, I explained that cylinders aren't really the best way to show arms. Like maybe they're the best way to like, you know, very quickly show you like direction, but it's almost better to have them as rectangles because it shows you perspective and which way the forearm is tilted within these, uh, you know, setups. Cause your forearm up here can twist and relatively your upper arm doesn't move. So like, uh, this whole, this whole twisting of the arm is one of those contorting issues that can be a problem. Um, this I've seen on Pinterest or something where if you look at the arm, there's like, uh, if you look at your arm, your, your kind of, your muscles are kind of layered. They're kind of linked and I'm using the link because uh, on the right here, I have this like chain link in perspective versus the arms kind of stubby and anatomy on the left. And then in the middle, I have the kind of cubist kind of looking, I guess, teaching point here, which is the, the delt and the bicep are like oriented perpendicular to each other, pretty much like the bicep and the tricep flat this way are flat where the, the delt sticks out the opposite way. And, and in turn, all the other muscles do the same thing. They call this, uh, Michael Hampton calls this, uh, active versus passive. Maybe is what he calls it. Um, let me draw real quick on like another layer. So pretty much like if you have your arm, which is, uh, something like this, your hands down here, uh, the delt, everything that you do has this like weave. And your whole body is like this because it, your, your muscles are kind of like long footballs, as David Finch would say, they have like a little tendon and then the mass of it, and then another little tendon. So, um, this tendon, you always have to remember connects to something else. So that's how this all comes to play. So the delt connects at a staggered rate. So the delt will connect here. Um, the tricep kind of connects even higher up underneath. So there'll be a, a stair step. It'll go here, here, uh, the bicep ends, and then the ridge muscles are right after that. So you'll end up having this flow of, of staggering muscles, like interlocking in this kind of like stair steppy, spirally kind of way. Um, I don't know if that explained it great. It's hard to in, in, in the moment, but I think Hampton calls it active because it just feels like the energy is connected in a better way it's way better than drawing your muscles like uh, the passive way, which is like, if this is your delt, this is your bicep and then your, your forearm or whatever. Right. Um, it's better like cartoons do this, which it's kind of a pet peeve, but they'll make these muscles like perfectly connecting like spheres. 
and it'll look like they're they connect here they connect here and they connect here instead it really connects here 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 and it staggers as it goes down that's the point here um dude arrogant ape what up dude um i'm using gonna use one of your quotes from your star circuit video bro uh, and it's gonna go into um my website on my under my accolades and it's pretty cool because i'm gonna put some others there but i just like how some accolades are there just some thoughts on what star circuit is we'll talk about that later um and uh skip is here what's up skip come hang out for a minute uh check out what i'm doing uh this arm tutorial is going to how to draw comics.net as as most of my tutorial tutorials do but um going through the slides that i go uh progress through here um let's see so from here we start breaking down like instead of just talking about different aspects of the arm i start really getting this is when the the real anatomy comes into play and the first thing i'll do which i'm still working on is to show the all the muscle groups kind of in my own simplified way all there and then i'll go to the kind of like what i did at the back where um i'll isolate the the muscle that i want to talk about if it's the delt you'll see just the pink part up there and then the rest of the bone where I can isolate and talk about it. The cool part about um, the arm is that it's all cylindrical based and it wraps around. So whenever I do draw these other muscles uh, over here, like say we do the ridge muscles, that's what these are called. Um, it's going to be cool because I'm going to be able to have these things kind of wrap around like a ribbon and you're going to be able to see where the muscles connect in, in 3D form, if you will. You know what I mean? So it's going to look like that whenever I get rid of all the other muscles. You're going to be able to, be able to see the connection up here. It's going to connect here and on the other side of the cylinder on the other end at the bottom. So that part is I'm looking forward to because I, I haven't seen that really. I, I You see it in like models. I have this. Uh, this really helps having like a sculpture. This is uh, Anatomy 360. No, what is this? 30 total. I don't know what I don't know where this is really from, but it's really cool because you're able to see where muscles uh, kind of wrap and do their thing. You know what I mean? So it's cool. Hello, Sherry's coming to say hi. Um, so the a few things you you want to do is something unique if you're making a t tutorial. And for me, this is this is going to be pretty unique. It's going to be like I don't I don't think I've seen many of the breakdowns go this kind of cool this 3d uh that's the idea so that's where i'm at here i'm i'm literally on the next set which would be um the opposite side so this is kind of what i would call the back over here on this side um this is what i would call the back and this is what will be the front um and then i'll have to do a separate slide where i twist the the forearm you know because Basically, this would be the back of the hand over here, and this would be the palm, you know, the front of the hand. However, the forearm also can twist, you know, well, that's an arrow. That was supposed to be an arrow. Um, the forearm can twist, so now you'll still have the same kind of muscles up here, but these would flip back to this, one on the left. Uh, and they kind of contort a little bit. So that's what I'll have to do after this part. Um, we, can, we can work on this while we talk for a minute. Um, because I did, I do want to talk about one other thing. I'm trying to increase my my speed and whatnot, and I think going back to a new one, I need a new computer. But I also think I'd, I'm using an iPad right now, and uh, I think a tablet, in some ways, is better, mostly because of Photoshop, and you can do a, a little bit more with Photoshop than you can with Clip Studio in a non-illustrator way. There's so many filters. 3D aspects and, and, and stuff like that, that I, I'm missing out on. It's kind of a, uh, a weird thing where uh, there's a give and take and dude, Photoshop on iPad is the most ridiculous. Uh, I, I don't even know why they have it. I, re I really don't. Cause if you're using it as a photo editor, they're still better apps than, than, than Photoshop on iPad. It's like, the best part is this. I, I wish I took a video of this, but 
the app literally has the tabs for things, but all of them say, oh, it's, it's coming soon. Except that's not going to, I don't think it's ever going to happen. It's like, you're going to have, uh, <laughs> so just like in Photoshop, they'll have whatever, you know, it'll have filters on the side and they'll have layer options like multiply and, and overlay, whatever. And over here, every time you click them, <laughs> it has the same message. It, it's it, don't worry it's coming bro um and it's just funny dude the splintering what's up dude um you uh you've popped in once in, once in a while but it's good to see you here uh in the morning with me same thing with 24 eyes he's bringing in the owls hoot hoot dude i'm, I'm surprised he never throws out a hoot in chat um maybe that's a little lame uh anyway ipad photoshop is a disgrace to even having the name photoshop uh it's it's so ridiculous it's so dumb um anyway that's why maybe we'll go with the tablet the huey on the one that you mentioned skip uh seems like the way to go it's cheaper than wacom but it looks like it's got this, the best quality out of the off brands if you will and so i'll probably go that route however i almost need a new computer to run that shit so i'm, I'm stuck a little bit uh anyway so over here, let's let's do this back of the the well, the front of the arm rather. Um, one little pet peeve over here is like this little one angle. I think I went too far with the ridge muscles. So little little anatomy instruction, real quick, because um, the arm is broken down even further than this. Uh, though this is the simplest form. So you got delt triceps, which are kind of broken up into other things. Ridge muscles, which are broken up into other things. The extensor kind of group, which is broken up into individual tendons, and then the flexors. Um, and then there's this one little weird thing below the elbow. But that's for the back. And then there's like the bicep as well. Um, but here's the issue, bro. Um, here's the issue with with going really deep. Then it, then it just becomes minutia for anybody new to it or anybody that like is still iffy, which is including me, like... I'm doing the tutorial, but I'm I'm studying as I'm doing it. This is a trick of the trade, guys. Most people that are doing like stuff on the side or doing, um, especially teaching stuff, teaching is the best way to learn. Like, I don't know if you know this, I have a good understanding of anatomy, but I'm leveling up as I'm making this. So that's the best part about tutorial making. You guys should all make some just for yourself. Um, says if you don't have a USB-C port, you'll have to get an adapter. Other than that, no complaints. Okay. Um, well, I just think I need a new computer. Like it's my, uh, I don't think I have enough. I need a new graphics card for some of the new Photoshop stuff anyway. And I need um, probably more RAM and just more CPU power. I'm just over across the board. This, this Mac I'm using is a 2012, I believe. So it's due. It's 10 years old, bro. It's due for a new one. Mm. So, uh, thanks for the input, though. I, I definitely, I agree. Um, USB-C is becoming the, well, it's universal. <laughs> I think it's in the name, right? Um, good to have you all here, though. So, this is why we, we, we don't break them down. Because a lot of places will break down all these different ones here. This is like the main the main extensor. Uh, and they'll break each one of these down and into further and further. I don't think it's useful, not for artists anyway. I think like it's it's useful to know where they connect. Like, um, I believe if I'm instructing this correctly, you have like a you have like a connection down here from the flexors. Um, so this is the back of the hand, right? So the thumb will be over here on this hand, back, this back of the hand. So this the flexors will hit this um hmm will hit this pinky these extensors will control the the middle fingers and then i think some of the also the thumb as well but it's useful to know what muscles attach to what actions that's that's as far as you need to take it otherwise you don't need to really break it down i uh pretty much the forearms broken down into these three uh, and that elbow thing is kind of just there i don't, don't even want to talk about it because it's it's literally just the elbow. Um, it's just muscle instead of bone. There's like a little bit of muscle there. 
Um, and then the triceps also get broken down, but you don't, there's no need for it. <laughs> Just got to know that they kind of wrap around a little bit of the, the elbow um, and a little bit. Uh, and then also tuck underneath the, the delt from the back. From the back, they go underneath. It's just good to know where they wrap to and connect to. That's the best. So, uh, Genuine's here. What's up? Dave, how you doing, bro? Um, you just received Roken yesterday. You missed my little talk, bro. Um, I, I, I have good things to say about Groken. Many good things. Um, I think if I had to come up with a gripe, though, if I had to, would be that one... Seems like there's a little bit of a cadence thing going on with the, the writing. Like It seems like... We know it's not like a direct translation type of thing where they find a, you just find a generic translator and then make it work. I think it was written in English, but it's just got this kind of different cadence than you're not really used to um, as far as like reading English stuff. Um, but I think that's kind of not even a gripe because it brings this interesting new flavor to, to everything. So um, that's my take. Besides that, it's like, it's, it's, the art and storytelling is sometimes on such a higher level than other indie books that you're, because obviously he's been a pro for forever. It's just, it's on another plane of existence, kind of. That's how I would put it. I'd put, I'd put Groken on some other plane of existence as far as skilled ex execution. Um, I It's highly recommended. So... That's how I would I would go about um, explaining that part of it. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, okay, so I wanted to sketch in the other side of this arm real quick before I uh, lose my mind. Okay, so I'm looking at one of the anatomy books. I have, I have like five different anatomy books and videos because I, I try to pull from everyone's approaches. It's the, it's about how you simplify these things, you know? And so everybody's got their own approach, what they respect, what they want to see more. Um, it's it's 11 now. What does, is uh, Ginge Gingerton's uh, stream going on right now? Can I uh, snipe him? Because I do want to see Gambino. I think he's on. The Italian, the Italian boy's on. Um, okay, so... This is the back of the hand. This would be the front of the hand uh, over here. And so let's open this up. I'm just redrawing something. I don't know. Where's this layer? There we go. Okay, so here we're just gonna draw, draw in the opposite end. So these would be the ridge muscles that you're seeing on this side, but they're over here now. Um, that would mean the flexors are on the opposite side. I'm looking at it and see it because it's cool that I I never noticed that the flexors kind of cross into the middle, which are so they they'll go here from the from the wrap, and the flexors are over here by the way that side, and they'll wrap and then come in the in the middle and they'll have this tendon that kind of reaches them from here, which is cool, and these are this is my rough you know from here I'll do the cleaner line. But this is kind of feeling out what's going on. What is going on? Hmm. That wrap I'm not really sure about. This orange one, that's part of the triceps, no? Hmm. I think, yeah, the triceps wrap around, I think, a little bit. Uh, Zaid, good to see you, though, dude. Good to see you in the chat. Um, let's see. So the I guess the, the front of the hand is mostly this one tendon and otherwise you're getting the other side of the extensors maybe hmm anyway let's 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 shapely draw these in we all know there's this muscle here it kind of connects in that way it's not that we all know but that's that's the way it is this will kind of connect from the other side I think that looks about right. Like I said, this is rough. Um, and it'll be cool because later on, like I said, I'll, I'll show how they wrap later. Right now, it's just straightforward. So this is kind of the other side of the triceps, it looks like. 
the it'd be this side over here the triceps kind of rapid grabbing or no uh, it is yeah that's right I, the mirroring is messing with me i think that's the triceps though hmm okay ridge muscles the ridges okay so yeah these are the ridge both of the ridge the ridge muscles are cool because you really get to see them flex in certain cool positions. Um, and some of us have super rich muscles <laughs> over others. Um, I just like how they, they wrap around and go up to meet the bicep, kind of. It's, it's pretty cool. I like it. So those go here, ridge muscles, uh, flexors over here. And then the extensors kind of, they're just there. They're on the back end. Um, and I'll show them wrap later. But this is a good, this is a good step. I think that's it. Uh, everything else that are in between, there's a bunch of little small ones up here that you don't really have to worry about. Um, the more you worry about them, I feel like the more, it's kind of like lighting. You know, everybody, I think I've heard this first from Dave Finch, but uh, the more you think about lighting in like this five light situation where now there's three bounce lights, you know, you're, you're just complicating it. At, at most, keep two lights in mind. One main one, you might even want to think about it. Like for lighting something, Literally just have the, the main light that you want to hit uh, and then shadow the other side. That's it. And then afterward, you, you know, it's, you know, if you're used to this stuff, you can plan on the other bounce light being there, you know, and then making it work. But if you're thinking about the, the other, the lamps over here and there'll be another bounce light here and this will be less, you know, it'll get dark as you go. If you think about all that as you're doing it, it kind of, I think it makes things rigid. So I try not to go that route. Um, same thing with these muscles. You kind of keep it simple as possible. If you think about every tendon as you're drawing these big mu these masses, I don't think it's going to work out well for you in the end, um, unless you're a super artist. And if that's the case, why are you looking at my tutorials? That's that's the point. You're making these tutorials for n no expert artist is looking at tutorials. Like they they might browse them real quick, but if they've done this forever, they're learning more from their own kind of exploration you know they might go draw to a finger a figure drawing class and then realize these things that are deeper at a deeper level than what we're talking about here um mm. sherry brought me a thin oreo have you seen these well here's it, here's the thing about this thin oreo thing i saw this on the box it says uh they're thin so you're getting a less cookie however these are the max filling cookies so they are also, um, I feel like it's uh, a little bit of a, a counterintuitive method. Um, look at this. So it's it's bursting at the seams from filling, but also they reduce the cookie. So this is for people that don't like the cookie, but want the filling in some other ratio. They should just call them the new ratio or something. They're, they're branded as, they're branded as healthy, I'd say. Thin wafery hmm. uh, Jeremy is trying to be a bot dude Jeremy's goal is to live up to bot level the bot the bot life mm. same I, I think there's tons of things you can learn there's always little things you're missing but we're talking about you know legendary levels of I don't know how much Rockefeller is going to learn from my tutorials is my point. Okay. We only buy gluten-free Oreos. Someone said they tasted better and I agree. Really? Hmm. I'll have to try it out. There is a weird thing. You guys notice when, when you guys eat, uh, I don't know, certain like candies or artificial bullshit, <laughs> you'll notice like how, odd they taste after a while like if you if you don't eat like a kit kat for a while you go back and eat a kit kat you're like is this chocolate what is this shit um but if you're really into it and you eat them all the time it like almost it's like mcdonald's it's like mcdonald's taste is disgusting but you you learn to love it if that's what you're eating all the time i guess I haven't had mcdonald's in in years um and uh god willing i don't ever eat it again so it's just my style. 
I got too many other vices. Can't have McDonald's in my way. <clears throat> Sherry says, uh, I want to buy all the weird Oreos and try them. Yes, um, there's this, well, now he's kind of, he's, he's a pretty lefty kind of guy, but um, <laughs> there's this guy called uh, Game Over Greggy who was over on IGN but broke away from them. And he did like a series of all the Oreo tastings. Um, their videos are pretty funny because he's kind of fat. Or maybe was. I don't know if he's fat anymore. Anyway, they're, they're great videos. They do have many. Uh, I, I'm a fan of mint. Sherry was going to get me mint. Hmm. His taste sounds like it's coming back. Dude, don't. My taste was always there, bro. Um, COVID can't stop uh, the Italian taste buds. That's how it works. We got superhuman taste buds. That's that's our superpowers, bro. We can't can't deny that. <clears throat> All right, um, chubby bunny, dude. <laughs> um, I don't remember what you how that how that game works, or is that just a slur? You're trying to slur me, dude. Um, okay, so we have the the front here pretty much done. I'm wondering if I should include the uh, just a little sketch of the hand. Instead of just writing the name, I think it's more intuitive to see the hand. But then again, it's so cropped. I don't know. I think I'm just going to write it. No shame. No shame, bro. No shame in this. Let's just write it. No, one, no one's coming to my tutorials for my handwriting. That's for sure. Front. Yeah, buddy. Um, put it on the wrong layer though, cause I'm a fool. No, I, I just always forget. I, uh, my, this is why I don't like using layers so much. Cause I end up, it becomes a slowdown, um, for me much more than an, an aid. I feel like, uh, should have cut it, whatever. Okay. Now they're here. Cool. So now when I get rid of this, um, it'll be sweet. All right, let's do the uh, cleaner lines. <laughs> What's with that handwriting, bro? <laughs> uh, dude, nothing's wrong. I think it should, that's actually some of the cleanest I've done. Um, I always write with capitals. I don't know what everybody, how, is your handwriting case sensitive like mine? Hmm. And Sherry's right about the marshmallows. That's how that game works. You you stuff your face with marshmallows and you try to say Chubby Bunny, right? Um, such a such a childish game that I would never do at thirty four. Um, let's see. Uh, where are we at? Oh yeah, making this uh, clean, clean as can be. Where is? I guess I'll have to put it on the top layer. That's how that works. Yeah, let's do it up here. Uh, as you can see, I'm not, I'm not naming any of my, I'm not naming any of this bullshit. That's just how I roll. What, what brush am I using over here? I don't like that brush. I need it cleaner. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. I like how this delta has an S curve going. The beauty curve, as they say beauty line yeah sherry wants to play that game um and uh i didn't take the cpr course i should have took the cpr course that way you could save each other's from the chubby bunny games um i handwrite in font what does that mean what what uh what font is what's the default font for jeremy Oh, dude, Papyrus. Um, maybe one of the last good um, SNL skits that ever came out was the Papyrus uh, Ryan Gosling video. That was probably the best around. Sherry, I have no clue what this thing says. Maybe in the YouTube chat I can see. No, nope, it's also a square. Um, okay. So I'm going to definitely jump over and see what... Ginge Gingerton's doing over there um, with Pedro Wang and, and Gambino. I definitely going that route. I'm gonna finish up this uh, hand, uh, the, the second layer of this arm, uh, for sure.
Dude, it's Papyrus, dude. Yeah, it's straight up Avatar's, Avatar's logo. It's straight up Papyrus. That is probably, like I said, it's it's one of the greatest, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> it's just funny to see. Um, I think the best you can say about Ryan Gosling is his, his, his anger state is really entertaining. Um, maybe he's not the best actor in general. He's good at looking like uh, an attractive man and saying serious words. Uh, but his anger state is like almost funny in a way. You're like, this guy is like fantastic at getting pissed. Um, look out. So what did I say? Um, yeah, I'm going to do these lines. I'm going to check out Ginger Chin, Ging, Gingerton's stream. Everybody go check them out. Uh, they deserve some watches. Um, some views, not watches. Don't buy them any watches. Um Jeez, what is going on? This is another problem with iPad. <laughs> Sometimes it just like freaks out. And I maybe it's just me. I've replaced an iPad before because of this thing where it like it it just does whatever it wants. And right there it was kind of like not really respecting my strokes. Um hmm. But anyway, we're gonna clean this up. Doesn't have to be perfect, but uh that's the best part about tutorials. It can be whatever you need it to be. As long as it hits the teaching point. So I should be pretty careful, but no worries. Over here, you can see I kind of like, so the main contours I do like this. And then if there's any in between muscles, I'll do like a, a broken line where we have a little bit there, a little bit there, that taper in toward it. And then it looks like there's a little bit of a, a tendon there, some structure. Yeah, uh, I think my favorite scene in the new Blade Runner when, when, was when he got pissed at, uh, at um, I think he was pissed. He was talking to the, the, the daughter in the, in the habitat. Hopefully this is not a spoiler for anyone, but he gets pissed and like throws a chair at a window or something. It was, it was my favorite part, definitely. Especially from his acting. Okay. Hey, tendons do it hmm looking at a little bit of reference just to see how long this tendon is before it's usually around the third of the forearm so I knew that but yes yes and this kind of curves out around the I guess the outer bone here I don't know the bones right there so I probably should respect how the bone looks Yes. Aerith, what's up? Dude, uh, look, man, there's, it's 2022. There's a lot of weird things out there. Uh, on this channel, we don't, we don't discriminate. Um, but yeah, <laughs> good to have you over here, Bert. I, uh, I saw, you know what I saw? I'll show you this. I mean, don't we do a little ad? Cause I'm a, I'm a shill. I'm a shill for friends. A shill for friends what I do um, and and Bri's up in here so I saw this in the uh, in my email over the weekend um, some some weirdos are doing cool things out there in the world um, uh, don't mind Groken Groken's here to, uh, to stay everyone but <laughs> I'm gonna move to the next screen here this is what I saw if it'll load yes uh, not that bad giveaway and uh, seems like Aerith here is is a part of such such a giveaway um, apparently these 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 guys are giving away uh, many things uh, seems like Rob the replicator Robocopter himself uh, forehead man uh, Aerith and uh, Mr. Hat uh, the, the king of hats himself they're all joining together and, and putting away uh, a great value so you guys can you guys can sign up and try to win all these sweet prizes I don't know how much what do they say 385 
dollar value. I don't I don't like whenever people say that, guys. I it's cool that we know, but it just seems like scamming. I don't know, just just me. Anyway, uh, though it does seem like a sick set of prizes, so I'm glad to be uh, signing up for this thing. I wonder if I if I'm eligible. I've already signed up for the mailing list. Hmm, I don't know. But either way, I'm I'm stoked, especially because I didn't buy the the super box from Earth, so I do want that super box, the tape, the tape box. Um, I think I have everything else on this set. Maybe I don't have the graveyard shift like chippy stuff, and I definitely don't have the omnibus uh, warts and all stuff. So that would be cool if I got first prize. But you know, go sign up, everyone. It's um, I wonder if I can put out this link. Are they spreading this link out somewhere? Dude, no worries about the shout out. Um, hail the chat, Immortal Rising. Apparently he's got a, uh, he's got a Star Circuit uh, review coming. It's gonna be fun. Hail, hail. I uh, appreciate anything that, that comes this way. Uh, Star Circuit's only gonna be available on Indiegogo for, I don't know, let's just say uh, a week. Well, still, yeah, a week sounds good. Um, so we've got some backers. It would be really cool to hit 400 backers now that we've crossed over the 20K mark. It's a killer, uh, damn, it's a killer cool um, book. And so you should join in the fun. There's only one way to get this freaking cover right here, made by yours truly. Um, I made this uh, with impeccable um, determination. I don't know if that's the best way to say that, but uh worked on it like two times for sure finished it twice uh to get the best quality and uh it is only available here on indiegogo there's only like two copies left i think so jump on it if you want that cover it's the last chance so go go joe used to be a mall emo in high school dude i never even went to a mall dude um <laughs> uh though i i wish where dude i I'm one step below that. I, I wish I was mall emo. Um, so I was idolizing mall emo people. Um, you know, but you know, it, it's better. Jeremy was like a vagrant artist in the making. Um, <laughs> though he was doing awesome art, even in high school. So good to see him. Uh, my, my daughter stole both of my earth, earth boxes and all of the contests except the uh, comic she let me keep. Well, good for her. Does she, is she... <laughs> Is she reading yet, or is that because she can't read yet, and so she doesn't know words? And congrats to me. Yes, thank you, dude. Hashtag 20K. Hashtag, hashtag champion. Um, I backed uh, Cerebrum last night, by the way, guys. I also have that here. Back Cerebrum last night, because I saw he was, uh, right before it went into man, I was like, I need to get in at the ground level. Um, Cyberpunk. I went with the main cover, because nothing against Joe, um, and the bike, but I can't have another bike in my house. I have so many bikes. I got bike stuff everywhere. I can't have that. Um, so yeah. Oh, she's two. She just likes cool ass stuff. Yeah. Well, you also proved my point with her not being able to read, uh, all those complex words yet, but, um, she obviously has taste stealing all earth, all the earth goodies. Um, we're going to bounce out of here. Uh, anything else I want to bring up? Sign up for that. Not that bad giveaway. I'm sure if you go to the, any of the Twitters out there, you can find it. Uh, try to get that last copy of Star Circuit's main cover. That would be great. Uh, all my tutorials can be found on howtodrawcomics.net. Um, and this new one, this ARM tutorial, will be there eventually. What's the last little thing here? Oh, yeah, my website. Actually, I don't know if I'm going to show that yet. But it's very close to being done. Next week, we will have a uh, finished product i believe with all the things the new cover for star circuit i've already presented on twitter last week so you'll be able to get that uh homemade black leather horse mask for art three gotta see are you saying me um i'm hoping you're not being derogatory to some girl that was in your art class dude you might you must be me um gotta see <laughs> black leather horse mask <laughs> uh Great. All right. Question. Last question. Where does the name Veravia come from? Don't think I've ever heard of it. Uh, what's its meaning? Well, Veravia, now you're making me want to bring up the website, but uh, basically Veravia is Latin. Um, and 
Uh, my dad actually is very, um, he's not, I, don't, I don't think you can be fluent. Can you be in fluent in Latin? You might be able to, to be that, but my dad knows Latin. And so it kind of stems from like being brought up in uh, being curious about it. So Vera Via is, Via is the path. It's like a, it's a, it's a roadway. And so uh, between the pun of me doing racing books and the road and uh, that meaning like the way of or the path of uh, Vera is just truth or reality. So it's really the true path, the, the real path. And so uh, the whole goal is to kind of this pun about having a racing line on a road and having this true way to really navigate it. But also it is storytelling that is real. Like it's, it's I'm making stuff that feels real and you'll inherently know that it's real um, by the feeling you get after you read it. So it's really the, the real path. It's, it's a reminder to, to stay true. Hashtag the true path. Um, yes, though if you go out there and look for Vera Via stuff, most of it is like spas, you know, so maybe maybe down the road I'll open a comic book spa. You guys can uh, come by, buy some comic books, get a get a nice pedicure and, uh, and uh, massage, you know what I mean? For all you dudes out there that have disgusting feet like myself. Um, anyway, let's move on. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye. You guys are beautiful for showing up. It's really fun to have you guys around, talk to you. I will be uh, around. I'm going to go check out Ginge's uh, stream before it ends. That'll be fun. Aerosol asked comment is, yeah, you can be fluent. My pops was too. I think a lot of dudes in the generation learned it. Yeah, for sure. My dad was like, my dad is super Catholic. So yeah, I think you learned it because like back in the old school days catholicism like only was in latin i think the old school way the i forget which kind of catholicism anyway the point is he learned it for that and then he was just really into it and i think it's a good way to go so <laughs> joe's good ass barbecue and foot massage um yeah it's, it's gonna be a spa dude there's no barbecue involved don't bring your heathen ways into my spa um, yeah, Catholic school for sure. But he was on another level. We're not even talking about like every what they call mass, uh, the, the 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 church part of it. When the, when the priest comes around and talks, that was all in Latin at some point, and nobody knew Latin. So if you knew if you didn't know Latin, you didn't know what he was saying. But uh, I think they started teaching them back in the day. Uh, so uh, hail hail to your pops, dude, for no Latin, knowing Latin, and uh, maybe you knew what Veravian meant before I even said it. And to you, props to you if you knew that. I will see you guys next week. Uh, Art Bros this week is probably on, I believe, unless I get some crazy job. I've, I've been getting freelance work nonstop, so uh, maybe I have work, but most likely we'll be on for Art Bros. Me and Jerem are uh, going to talk to somebody. We'll get somebody on the stream. Speaking of, if you know anybody that wants to be on the stream, let me know. That'll be uh, a sweet time. Uh, you guys, check out Star Circuit. I'm going to play the trailer real quick, real quick and uh, head out of here. Peace out. You guys are the best. Um, and hell, Derek, just r Dirk, right before you came in here, uh, before I left, hail to you. We'll we'll catch you next time. Come come by, have a cup of Joe with me next Sunday. That'd be great. Um, peace out, everybody. It's gonna be fun, uh, fun day of drawing and whatnot for me. Peace. Welcome to the future. A place where you can find anything you desire. If the burner games don't find you first. Where the fastest racers are artificial. And if you're human. You don't stand a chance. Star Circuit.